that's it. Mm-hmm. There's not supposed to be any legal stuff at all. So the whole thing is kind of shady. But according to Lewis Adams, he didn't expect any shady, anything <laughs> no shady, shady to go yeah. on. He just thought, I'm going to pay for this guy because he's good and he'll help. And he did. Interesting. What he did in California, I don't know because it never came up in the news again. And he passed away peacefully in Los Angeles in 1972. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Woof. So now, now the interesting question that comes up is, how many people like this could you find in history? Because I'm sure like that, this. Yeah. Well, that would that was that was what they did. They can, did illegal abortions. I bet you back in those days, man, that wasn't very uncommon. <laughs> well, you know, no. I can speak to that a little bit because this is something that comes up in like the organized crime mafia stuff. Because the the mafia guys who are also involved in prostitution generally know a guy who does this Which sort of thing. thing. Right. Because one of the side effects of prostitution <laughs> is sometimes you get pregnant. <laughs> and generally speaking, you don't want that baby. <laughs> um, again, I know this is this is not a fun topic. This is not something that some people really want to hear a lot about. But again, I'm going to keep it as light as I can. The cases that I know of there, they generally hire real doctors. Okay. So it wasn't legal for the doctors to do it it. either, but they at least knew what they were doing. Doing. Yeah. Well, in theory, they knew what they were doing because I'm pretty sure you didn't go to medical school and get taught how to do an abortion. But you're probably a lot better, safer having a doctor do it than some guy. No, I don't think they were specifically taught how to do abortions. But if if you go to like an OBGYN or whatever the equivalent of that was at the time, I don't know if that was what they were called. But I mean, but they know. They understand. They know the parts that they're looking at and how to make a... Things yeah. things work the way they're supposed to work or not work the way they're supposed to work. I mean, they're not just going around cutting things. Like, so um, it's it's a better move. That and hopefully they have something with them, like like anesthesia or something. <laughs> um, better than going to some guy's kitchen. Right. And, and it also sounds like this guy just kind of commi- did the surgery and said, okay, have a good day. You know, yeah. Wait, best of luck to you. Yeah, if, Where, they, if they were lucky, maybe they got a bottle of Advil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and really, you should probably following up. Like, how does how are you feeling after it? Does anything yeah. feel wrong? Blah blah blah. But he's not a doctor, so yeah. He, but he can't help with that. So yeah. So then I'm curious. So and, yeah, maybe and, we'll maybe we'll tell that story on the Milwaukee Mafia podcast someday. Because yeah, there was a doctor who got in some serious trouble for that. Um, out of Beloit, he was working right, yeah. working with the guys doing that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the other thing... Good way I, to lose your medical license, <laughs> tell you that. The other thing that I found interesting is is that you had mentioned that he had $7,000 or something in his possession at the time when they picked him up yeah. or whatever. So now we don't have any evidence of this, but are are you reading into that in the sense that he's probably been doing this the whole time and this is just the first time he had a problem you know because there was an eight year span i don't know where, if i'm reading that into it but i would be shocked if he wasn't yeah yeah it, it just, just doesn't seem like something after eight years you just suddenly like oh well yeah i guess i can do if another people, abortion so he, li- he <laughs> lives know? in manitowoc if people from sheboygan and marinette and everywhere else are coming to him he's, he's apparently a known guy, guy yeah. yeah like I don't know why you would go to this guy because, like, the things he's known for publicly are not good. Um, but he's apparently somebody that they talk. And I think originally, like, when he's working as the hotel porter, like, I would have to see more of the details. But I got the impression that that's kind of how we got into it because there might have been people who were, like, coming to that hotel and it might not have been, you know. Uh, There might have been some kind of shady business going on there. I don't know. But that's kind of how I feel like he got into into it was through that hotel. But I don't know. And this is this is one of those, you know, sometimes you'll hear me say this on here. Like sometimes it's like, okay, we're we're done. Other times I'm like, maybe this one needs more explanation. And this is a more explanation episode because 
now that I know a lot of these court records still exist, this is the kind of guy where I'd love to pull these court records. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm getting in the paper is enough for a story. It, it, I think this episode's fine. But there's certain things I'm really curious yeah. about. Yeah. And there's certain things that I don't know that I'd be comfortable saying on the air. But I'd still like to read them. Mm -hmm. Because I'd like to know, like, what are these surgical instruments he's using? I would love specifically to be told, you know, does that just mean he owns a scalpel? I mean, or does he actually have like a speculum or something? And all the guys at home are like, what the hell is a speculum? Uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> Eric's like, what's a speculum? No, Eric probably knows what a speculum is. Actually, I don't. So. Oh, do you want to know? Is it the, like the thing that... What was that? What was Dude, that move? Go ahead. Tell me what it is. Well, I th I think it looks like a duck head. Um, and it, and it's like, if you squeeze the handle, it opens up like the duck's beak yep. and you can stick a flashlight in the back and see. In, yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. I, that's okay. kind of what I think I'm envisioning. Okay. So now everyone, now everyone's like really, if like, you can talk about abortions all you want, <laughs> but now it's talking about gynecology. Gross. Well, and the other thing I find really interesting about this is he has no medical training. So how does one learn, I mean, learn how to do an abortion? Do they just? I don't know. You know what I mean? Do 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 you just try it one day and it works and you're like, okay, well, I guess I kind of re maybe refine my craft a little. Bit. I mean, I don't have a clue because <laughs> I will tell you this: I probably have better ideas about female anatomy than the average guy did in the 1930s and 1940s. And you have no idea how to do. Oh, I would. Do I wouldn't want to even <laughs> attempt it. it. Yeah. No, like. If it's a life or death situation, I still don't want anything <laughs> to do, do with, with that. that. Yeah. No. So, yeah, I don't know how you just decide, like, one day, oh, I'm going to probe around and learn how to do it. Like, no. Yeah, like, like, where do you get that training? Because it's illegal. So, obviously, there's not a school you go to. And, I mean, I guess you just know a guy who knows a guy or what something like that. I don't it's know. Weird. But, like I said, that's, things like that are very interesting to me because – they're not publicly like known. I'd love to hear if if the testimony actually goes into how he got into this. What is he using? Mm -hmm. Why do people know who he is? You know, there's. I feel like there's a whole lot more going on here um, that would like kind of get a better idea of not just this guy, but the whole scene at the time. Because right. because like this is the, this is the sad truth of the matter. Like. Again, whether people agree with abortions or not, and I know, again, it's super controversial, which is why I'm trying to keep this as light as possible. Like, whether they're illegal or not, they happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, this is a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully not like this anymore, right. but but it's a thing that happens. And it's like, I, I'm so curious about how this worked when it was all underground and you couldn't talk about it. Exactly. And you think about it. So somebody, the, the last person, the person he got convicted of actual murder for was from Marinette. For our listeners that don't know, Marinette is probably two, at least two hours, probably three hours away from oh, uh, I Manitowoc. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's that far. Isn't it? Well, I don't think so. Okay, but it's at least an hour and a half. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is, is these are not, nearby cities to each other no it's not so so like how is he getting his name out like, right like i mean I, i'm trying to envision the marketing plan for an underground abortion clinic. i know that's the thing and, and like what do you do do you run an ad in the newspaper and there's like secret words that people just know that this guy's doing abortion i don't or know how do they do that i just i don't it's know very fascinating to me yeah and that's exactly why this one is one i'd like to know more about because i think that there's you know, maybe maybe there's, like, actual books out there that explain this. I mean, I'm sure people have researched it, but but I don't know. And I'd, I'd be really curious how this gets around. So uh, maybe this is one we'll return to someday if we don't get tons of hate mail because we're doing an <laughs> yeah, abortion yeah. story. Um, it's the only abortion story I have besides that, that mob one I was mentioning. So um, probably not a topic that we'll do again. And Definitely, it's something I think is worthy of a murder and mayhem podcast. And you know, you did also say that you know you hope abortion isn't happening this way today. But well, I hope not. I, I I as well do, and I hope definitely think it is not.